Friends, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. A few announcements for this evening. First of all, although it looks like they're done, yesterday we had a mild little infestation of wasps. But they've been everywhere. They have not shown up today. If you find one today, it can help send them to their maker. <laughs> So this is Black Friday in at least a traditional sense. Make sure that it's a Black Friday for them. Um, they may be God's creatures, but they may also be able to kill someone here. Henceforth, your due diligence. Um, that being said, I don't expect them with how much has cooled down, um, but just a word of warning. Secondly, if you're guests today, restrooms are downstairs. Don't plumb the steps to your rear or to this hallway. Wherever you'd rather go, that's where the restrooms are. Easter morning worship service is at 9 and 11 a.m. here at the church as we celebrate the resurrection. And so, in preparation for Resurrection Sunday, though, we also need to make note of why we're here in the first place. Good Friday is, celebration is not the right word for it, but it is a time to commemorate how much we need a Savior. Tonight, we will, each of our readers will read their reading, use the the acolyting stick there and extinguish the candle, just one, until the end of the service, where if all the lights go off properly, and sometimes they can be finicky, we will be finishing in the dark. That's a time for personal reflection. You are free to stay as long as you like. I may lock you in, <laughs> but since you can escape the court and fire code, you'll be able to leave. Because for some of us, we may need to deal with some things. What I've found today is that in preparing for family to come over for our Easter uh, dinner, Tina said to me, oh, so lovingly, Brian, you're in charge of cleaning the back porch. And so she didn't even say it lovingly, so you get the drip. That was my job to make sure the back porch was ready. We haven't touched that since y'all came over <laughs> for our, our open house. Three months later, thankfully we haven't had any snow or rock salt, or dirt, or on the back porch of paint starting to chip a little bit because of where we walk off. So as I was out there today, I cleaned as best as I could. I spent half an hour out there with the shop vac. I swept things. I realized the rugs were bad, so I took the rugs to the basement, threw them in the washing machine, sprayed off our rubber Pittsburgh Steelers welcome mat. It's a glorious piece of equipment. Went inside, patted myself on the back, he did say, great job. And then on my way over here tonight, I realized just how bad it still was. There's still spots on the ground where dirt's been tracked down. I have to scrub it on my hands and knees to get up. Some new paint has started to chip because the old paint wasn't up there to hold it down. And I realized those little corners and nooks and crannies I'd missed. There was still dirt there. It's not perfect. But I thought it was great because I was used to what was there before. That rubberized Steelers mat, which I spent tons of time on today, spring off with the hose. But that Steelers emblem is not white, it's sort of yellow. It's gonna need a lot of work. It looked good when I first worked on it. The longer I'm a Christian, the more I realize I'm just like the back porch. Not just because people want to love me. <laughs> yeah, I know, groans, you're welcome. But in reality, it's because all the work we do in cleaning ourselves up, I still help. As a Christian, in spite of how much I may have cleaned myself up, I still need a Savior. No matter where you're at, tonight's a reminder that we need a Savior. We cannot do this on our own. We need Jesus. That being said, it's also to be intentional about hearing about what Jesus did for us. There's a real purpose to tonight. <clears throat> with that being said, would you turn with me to our call to worship, which you can find in our programs? God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world. And we love darkness. 
let's sing together as we stand in number 504, The Old Rugged Cross. <laughs>
and some officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees went to the garden with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all of this would happen, came forward and said to them, Whom do you seek? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said to them, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again Jesus asked them, Who do you, who do you see? And they answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you seek me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word which he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those who you gave me. Having his sword, drew it and struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father had given me? So the band of soldiers and their captain and the officers of the Judean authorities seized Jesus and bound him. First they led him to Amos, for he was the father in law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had given advice to the religious authorities that it was good that one man should die for the people. So did another disciple. 
as this disciple was known to the high priest, he entered the court of the high priest along with Jesus while Peter stood outside at the door. So the other disciple who knew the high priest went out and spoke to the woman who guarded the gate and brought Peter in. The woman who guarded the gate said to Peter, Are not you also one of his, this man's disciples? Peter said, I am not. Now the servants and officers had made a charcoal fire because it was cold and they were standing and warming themselves. Peter also was with them, standing and warming himself. <coughs> priest then questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken open to the spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all Jewish people come together. I have said nothing secretly. Why do you ask me? Ask those who have heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When Jesus has said this, one of the officers, standing by, struck Jesus by, with his hand, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, bear witness to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Annas then Sent Jesus bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Friends, let's sing the first stanza, and were you there? Can number 288. authorities led Jesus from the house of Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so that they might not be defiled and that they might eat the Passover. So Pilate went up to them and said, what accusation do you bring against this man? They answered him, if this man were not an evildoer, we would not have handed him over. Pilate said to them, 
Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The religious authorities said to him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. This was to fulfill the word which Jesus had spoken to show what death he was to die. Friends, let's sing together in number 288, just verse 2. Where you go. Jesus. 
but the religious authorities cried out, If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend. Everyone who makes himself a king sets himself against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at a place called the pavement, and in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. Pilate said to the religious authorities, Behold your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. And they handed Jesus over to be crucified. sing together in number 288, verse 3. While the soldiers were crucifying Jesus, they took his garments and made four parts, one for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic did not have a seam, woven from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing, they cast lots.
as we celebrate the power of the resurrection, we also reflect on the cross and we share in the suffering. When Jesus died, he died for my sins and for your sins. His wounds were my wounds and his pain was my pain. Oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering.
So the soldiers divided his clothes amongst themselves, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clovis, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. Hymn number 288, Were You There? Just the fourth verse. <laughs> Is that right? Gave up his spirit and said, 